The Xylox were an ancient race, their civilizations spanning millennia across the galaxies. Revered for their wisdom and technological marvels, they were thought to be immortal. Until they encountered the humans, this chance meeting would upend their entire existence and shake the foundations of their society to the core. The first incursion caught the galaxies off guard. Whispers of strange occurrences rippled through the outer systems, mining crews vanishing, ships found adrift with no signs of struggle. At first, they were dismissed as mere spacers' tales, the ramblings of those too long isolated in the void. But then the incidents grew more brazen, more frequent. Heavily fortified outposts were boarded, and their inhabitants slaughtered with chilling brutality. The pattern was unmistakable. Someone or something was hunting, and they were headed toward the core systems. The Xylox High Council convened emergency meetings, their towering spires glowing with frantic activity. They had encountered countless new species over their long existence, sometimes welcoming them into the galactic community, other times defending their territory through military force. But they had never faced something like this, an adversary of unknown origin and motivations, one that struck with terrifying precision and showed no desire to communicate. As the attacks intensified, the truth became undeniable. This was not a new race they could parlay with or fight in conventional ways. This was an extermination force, bent on the eradication of all life. The Xylox were faced with an existential threat, the likes of which they could scarcely comprehend. The call went out across all inhabited systems, a final muster to defend civilization itself against the encroaching darkness. Fleets were assembled on a scale unseen for generations as the Xylox prepared to face their greatest challenge. Millions looked to the skies, wondering if this would be the conflict that finally brought their ancient race to its knees. Little did they know, their salvation would come from the most unlikely of sources, the humans, a newly emerged species from an insignificant outer colony. Underestimated at first, the tenacity and ingenuity of these upstart warriors would reshape the galaxy forever. For when the Xylox met humanity, they encountered a strength and ferocity they had never witnessed before. This was their first contact with a race that simply refused to be extinguished. The outer colonies had fallen into chaos. Outposts were going dark, entire populations disappearing without a trace. It started as a trickle, isolated incidents easily explained away as raiders or rogue AI attacks. But then the trickle became a flood as whole sectors were swallowed by the encroaching threat. On the harsh, unforgiving world of Korath V, a small human settlement came under siege. Alarms blared through the night as unknown hostiles breached the perimeter defenses. Vance Brom was roused from sleep by the deafening klaxons, his wife Ilara already pulling on her armor. They're here, she said grimly, tossing him his sidearm. Suit up, we need to get to the shelters. Vance's stomach clenched as he hurriedly dressed. For months they had heard the rumors, the stories filtering in from other colonies, about whole populations being wiped out by some unknown enemy. He had hoped, prayed even, that the threat would pass them by on this remote, unimportant world. But now the nightmare had arrived. What about the others? He asked, grabbing Alara's hand as they raced from their quarters. Outside, the colony was a blur of panic and chaos as soldiers and civilians scrambled for safety. Forget them, she replied, her voice hard. Our only priority is getting Kyla to the shelters. After that, it's every man for himself. Vance felt sick at her words, but knew she was right. Whatever was attacking, it showed no mercy to any living thing in its path. Their only hope was to reach the underground shelters and pray they could ride out the assault. They found their daughter Kyla huddled with a group of other children, eyes wide with terror. Alara scooped the girl up and they sprinted for the nearest shelter entrance dodging the streams of weapons fire that crisscrossed the smoke-choked air. All around them, the colony was being torn apart, buildings shredded by high explosives and energy beams. A bone-rattling explosion rocked the ground, flinging them from their feet. Vance's head slammed into the ferrocrete, lights exploding across his vision. He could taste blood in his mouth as he struggled back to his feet, searching wildly for his wife and child. Elara! he screamed, his voice swallowed by the cacophony of battle. Kyla! There, 20 meters away, he saw them stir, Elara shielding Kyla's small body with her own. 
Vance sprinted over, oblivious to the danger, hauling them both upright with his massive arms. We're almost there, come on! He roared over the shriek of incoming fire. They reached the shelter entrance as another salvo shook the ground. Vance punched the access code with bloodied fingers, and the armored doors ground open with aching slowness. He hurled Ilara and Kyla through, then turned to face whatever fresh hell was descending on them. What he saw would be seared into his mind forever. The enemy poured through the shattered perimeter like smoke, their forms indistinct and ever-shifting. One moment they appeared as nightmarish creatures of tooth and claw, the next as advanced mechanized warriors wreathed in energy fields. They flowed across the battlefield, an unstoppable tide of destruction that reduced everything in its path to ruin. Vance felt his blood run cold. This was no mere raider attack or AI insurgency. This was something far worse, far more powerful than anything they could comprehend. As the monstrosities surged forward, he realized the terrible truth. They were facing oblivion itself, grabbing the last civilian he saw, a terrified young woman clutching her severed arm. Vance shoved her into the shelter and sealed the hatch. He could only pray the armored doors would give them some protection from whatever fresh hell was about to be unleashed. Alara, get on the comms, he shouted, racking his rifle. Broadcast a general distress call on all frequencies. We need evac. Any ships in the sector need to get us the hell off this rock. His wife was already working the comm panel, her face pale, but her movements sure and steady. Sending it out now, but Vance, who's going to receive it? You saw what's out there. If that's come for us, what chance do we have? He shook his head grimly. I don't know, but like hell, I'm giving up without a fight. If we're going down, it'll be swinging every step of the way. Ilara managed a grim smile and kissed him fiercely. That's my husband. Give him hell, love. As she ducked back into the shelter, Vance turned to face the oncoming nightmare. All around, those still topside were dying in horrific ways, their bodies shredded and broken. He could see the muzzle flashes of the few soldiers still returning fire, but their efforts were futile against this implacable foe. Something shifted in the mass of enemies before him. A new shape emerged, larger and more defined than the others. As it solidified, Vance found himself staring at what appeared to be an immense mechanized warrior, bristling with heavy armaments and wreathed in shimmering energy fields. It fixed him with a pitiless, inhuman gaze, sensors glowing malevolently. Vance felt a frisson of pure atavistic terror claw its way up his spine. This was the stuff of his worst nightmares given form and purpose. Raising his rifle, he opened fire the heavy slugs pounding futilely against the creature's shields. It didn't even flinch, just continued its inexorable advance, clearly savoring the sight of this lone human's defiance. Vance was prepared to die. What he wasn't prepared for was the wave of agonizing cold that washed over him, draining the very life from his cells. He collapsed to his knees, his rifle falling from numb fingers as the entity approached. So this was how it ended, he thought hazily not with a blaze of glory, but succumbing to this alien horror's bizarre weaponry. At least Alara and Kyla were safe, for now. The entity loomed over him, a towering manifestation of death itself. Just before the darkness claimed him, Vance thought he saw something flicker across its impassive faceplate. Amusement. Then oblivion took him. The attack on Korath V was just the beginning. Within solar weeks, the pattern repeated itself across a dozen other human colony worlds in the outer systems. Settlements were wiped out, populations slaughtered in mass by the remorseless, unstoppable enemy. On the fortified world of Hebron, a sprawling military-industrial complex, the response was swift and brutal. General Marcus Cohen watched grimly from the command bunker as the first enemy contacts appeared on the sensor screens. They're really going to try and take this place? He asked, his voice a growl. After the pounding we gave them at Korath? Seems that way, sir, his ops officer replied tightly. We've got multiple hostile formations incoming from every vector. Readings are highly erratic. Keeping target locks is proving extremely difficult. Kane scowled. That matched the reports from the other engagements. These things, whatever they were, seem to exist in a constant state of flux. Their physical forms and energy signatures shifting and mutating with each passing moment. 
it made them incredibly hard to get a solid lock on, much less damage. Well, we'll just have to hit them harder then, he said. This is Hebron, the single most fortified world in the outer systems. If they want a piece of us, we'll make them regret every single nanometer of ground. He opened a channel to the System Defense Command. This is General Kane. Initiate long strike protocol. I want every gun, missile, and bomb we've got ready to blanket those bastards the second they hit our outer markers. We're not going to give them a single second to dig in. Aye, aye, General. Long strike is armed and awaiting your command. Kane watched the telemetry screens as the first enemy formations crossed into Hebron's outer defensive rings. At his nod, the world's gunners opened up, filling the void with enough ordnance to shatter a small moon. The bombardment was utterly, savagely relentless. Entire enemy formations were simply vaporized in the first few volleys, their shifting forms unable to withstand the sheer, overwhelming volume of fire. Kane allowed himself a thin smile as he saw the first breakthrough runs get chewed to rags. That's right, you alien sons of bitches, he growled. Just try and take this rock from us. But even as he spoke, fresh enemy contacts were flooding in, surging through the gaps in the firestorm in ever greater numbers. Kane's smile faded as he saw the sheer, incomprehensible scale of the attack forming up. They just keep coming, his ops officer said, the awe evident in her voice. Sir, there's too many of them. We'll be overrun within the hour at this rate. Kane shook his head, feeling a cold knot of dread in his gut. No, not overrun. Exterminated. The general knew the reports coming in from the other colonies. He knew these things showed no interest in capture or conquest, only the complete eradication of all human life. And they were throwing everything they had at Habron, the single greatest concentration of military force in the outer systems. If they fell here, the path to the inner colonies would be wide open, and there would be nothing to stop the enemy's remorseless advance. Get me a line to high command, he said grimly. We need to discuss contingencies. The battle raged across Hebron for three days. The defenders fought with a tenacity bordering on madness, unleashing everything they had at the implacable foe. Whole regiments of mechs and armor were chewed apart by the shifting energy fields and molecular disruptors of the enemy, their own weapons proving woefully inadequate. Through it all, Kane refused to give ground. He rallied his troops, urged them to fight on even as their numbers dwindled and their supplies ran dry. In the end, it was a single act of defiance that bought them the time they needed. Seeing the end was near, Kane ordered the firing of Hebron's planetary demolition charges, a last-ditch weapon designed to render the world completely uninhabitable. As the charges went up in a series of titanic detonations, they triggered a cascading reaction in Hebron's unstable planetary core. Within minutes, the entire world was racked by seismic storms of unimaginable fury, the very crust buckling and shattering. Kane watched on the view screens as the enemy forces were quite literally swallowed by the dying world, consumed by the energies unleashed. It was at that moment the evacuation transports arrived, punching through the chaos to snatch the last survivors from the shattered surface. Kane was the last man aboard, dragged into the troop bay by his exosuit as Hebron finally tore itself apart. As the battered transports made their way out of the system, the general could only stare in numb horror at the devastation they'd been forced to unleash. Hebron was gone, laid to waste to buy them a few precious hours of respite, but he knew deep down that it wouldn't be enough, not against an enemy like this. Word of the attacks reached the inner colonies in short order, throwing the core systems into chaos. The Xylox High Council found itself facing its greatest crisis in over 10 millennia of existence. Preposterous! Overseer Calthon boomed, his voice echoing through the vaulted chambers. You expect us to believe these humans were able to stall the enemy advance even temporarily? A newly emerged species from the outer fringe? I'm afraid the reports are all too real, Admiral Kyrax replied grimly. Hebron has been lost, along with several other key strongholds. The humans fought with, well, an almost insane level of determination. Whatever we think of their capabilities, they managed to slow the enemy's push for a time. Calton snorted derisively. A paltry delay at best, this council would be wise to devote its attentions to more permanent solutions. Kyrax fixed the overseer with a level stare. 
With all due respect, Overseer, perhaps it is time we considered some unorthodox options. Clearly, our conventional military forces have been dot 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 inadequate against this threat. A susurrus of murmurs ran through the assembled counselors. To even suggest the Xylox's martial might was lacking was tantamount to heresy. For over 10,000 cycles, they had reigned as the undisputed military power in the galaxy, enforcing their version of order and civilization on any who resisted. Now they faced an enemy that seemed to transcend all their strategies and capabilities. Worse, it was headed directly for their core worlds, carving an inexorable path of destruction through the outer systems. The humans have requested an audience, Kyrax went on. Their General Kane was most insistent. He believes they have insights that could prove valuable in this situation. Calthon's eyes narrowed dangerously. You would have us treat with these primitives? An insignificant species that until recently had barely achieved interstellar flight? I will not entertain such foolishness. Then you're a bigger fool than I thought. The deep, gravelly voice rang out across the chambers, silencing the heated discussion. All eyes turned as a powerfully built human male strode into the council's midst, armor streaked with scorch marks and viscera. Despite his battered appearance, he moved with an easy, rolling gait, projecting a sense of coiled menace. This was General Marcus Cohn, and he had no time to waste on pleasantries. You want to know what's coming for you? He growled, fixing the assembled Xylox with a baleful glare. Death. Oblivion. The total eradication of every living thing. That's what's headed your way. He stabbed a finger at the holographic star projection hovering above the central dais. We call them the Hydra. Don't bother asking where they came from or what they want, because we don't know and we don't care. All that matters is they're here to wipe us out, down to the last man, woman, and child. Kane turned his glare on the stunned overseer, Calton. You think my people are primitives? Maybe so, but we're the only ones who've managed to bloody the Hydra's nose so far. We hit them harder at Hebron than your precious fleets have across a dozen systems. He slammed his fist into his palm for emphasis. That's because when something's trying to wipe us out down to the last child, we don't play by your rules. We don't try and match them ship for ship or try and reason with them. We hit them with everything we've got until they're a smear on the bulkheads or we're all dead. It's that simple. Kyrak stepped forward, his expression unreadable. You have a suggestion then, General? Some strategy to employ against this Hydra? Kane barked a harsh laugh. Strategy? You want strategy against an enemy like that? He shook his head in disgust. There's only one strategy worth a damn. Survival. We fight or we die. Those are the only choices left. The human turned his gaze to the assembled counselors. The Hydra's been hitting our outer colonies hard, but they're still just getting warmed up. From what we've seen, they're traveling through the systems in wide dispersal patterns, trying to hit multiple targets simultaneously, probably hoping to overwhelm our defenses through sheer weight of numbers. He gestured at the hologram, which showed the steadily advancing wave fronts of the Hydra forces. But they've got to concentrate for the final push into your core systems, which means we've got one chance to hit them with everything we've got left before they reach the really heavily fortified worlds. Calton's eyes narrowed suspiciously. You propose an alliance then? A combined force to oppose the Hydra? Hell no, Kane said bluntly. You want to throw your ships at them? Be my guest. But my people have a different idea entirely. The general tapped a command into his wrist computer, and a new hollow projection materialized, this one showing a small, dense sphere of metal and electronics. This is the Valkyrie System Killer Missile, he said grimly. Experimental weapon, never been used in combat before. Packs a multi-vector cyclonic implosion warhead, designed to crack a planet's core on detonation. He looked around at their horrified faces and shrugged. What? You think we're going to try and match the Hydra ship for ship? We're going to hit them with everything we've got. One massive alpha strike with enough missiles to shatter a dozen systems. Kyrax paled beneath his ceremonial robes. General? You cannot be serious. Such an attack could destabilize the entire region. Millions of inhabited worlds would be caught in the blast radius. Billions, Admiral, Kane said flatly. Maybe trillions if we're lucky. But better that than letting the Hydra have its way. At least this way we take the bastards with us. 
A shocked silence fell over the council chambers. Even the arrogant Calthon seemed stunned into silence by the human's words. Kyrax found his voice first. Surely there has to be another way. A gambit, even a desperate one, that does not reduce to simple genocide. Kane shook his head. You're just not getting it. The Hydra's already chosen genocide for all of us. We're just going to beat them to the punch. He looked around at their stricken faces contemptuously. But hey, don't let me stop you from trying diplomacy or whatever other naive stunts you've got planned. We'll be over here actually doing what's needed to survive. With that, the general spun on his heel and stormed from the chambers, leaving the Xylox council to reel in his wake. 